We are now in the final week of the Illustrial Championship League Season 2, and I'm facing Karibro piloting Earth and Water. I definitely think Earth and Water are very complementary types. Earth Beaters really likes the bringing in Tsunami to control the tempo of the game. Meanwhile, Water, with their slower strategies, really likes having access to Earthquake just to easily pop everything without having to deal with Laurel's condition at all. Now, I could sit here and say all the different decks that I think Karibro could bring, but honestly, none of it mattered. I just knew what deck I wanted to bring this week just to wrap it up because I've been wanting to play this and play it more competently than I did in the past week. I want to end this season off with what these two element pairings really brought to the table, and that is Krakatuga Burn with a three Krakatuga and three Eruption here. The game plan of this deck is simple. I want to try to get a Krakatuga in hand with multiple copies of Eruption if possible to just try to burn Kribro over the top for game, or put so much pressure on a spirit deck, burn for so many spirits, it just simplifies the game state to where he doesn't really have enough spirits to continue pushing for game while also answering my board. And Krakatuga being able to destroy a card on the board after Eruption is cast really plays into this just leaving him with so few spirits he can't accurately answer something. Because what I could easily do is I can go Krakatuga. If he doesn't have Gorgon's Gaze, that's going to be the big answer. Just being able to burn him for three, Eruption, and then pop the Elestron board and then hit him for two. That's also a valid way to sequence this win condition. And there's plenty other plays that I could go to accomplish this goal. One card I wish I ran against Luck that I am running against Karibro is the one of Tadpuff to help me more easily get into my Krakatuga. I didn't love it against Luck, and I don't really love it either against Karibro because I do have to expend a Water Spirit to be able to play it out. And this combo here is already minimum four spirits that I need to have access to. Uh, really three because ideally I have a body on board, but this just ups it by one and can make it harder to really be up on enough spirits to just outlast Karibro. But at the same time with Earth, uh, having Earthquake, uh, Karibro can run resting on your laurels. Like there's plenty of ways that he can keep me off Elestrals on board, especially with Earth Beaters. I really do feel like I just need this Tad Puff to be able to get out that Krakatuga in a moment's notice. So I'm hoping not to have to rely on it. I don't want to clog up my deck with multiple copies. It's not like the Majesty combo. This is very much a late game play. So if I can find the one copy, I'll be happy. And if not, I'm just going to have to hope I have a body on board. I do have my five guys core complementing this package with three Necruff, three Galaxy, and the two small Tuga. So three Necruff, of course, really plays into the burn theme since when it destroys an Elestral in battle, your, the opponent must expend one. So again, that's just kind of pushing him to lower spirit counts, making the eruptions and Krakatugas even more lethal or just setting that up a bit quicker. And just a good beater overall. Five attacks, great. We've seen this time and time again. And as I mentioned with the burn, really relevant with this deck and what it's trying to accomplish. I have the two small two good to search out the Necruff. I decided to only go for two and not the three, despite it pairing very nicely with Galaxy. But I do want some more offensively minded Elestrals, just to kind of put some more pressure, force some more counter runes out of Karibro or put more pressure on his board, since I'm really trying to get him to use spirits. Now, small two good doesn't really do that. There's some situations where it'll be nice, help me find a Necruff. And I really want to find it for that, but not having all these small two goods just kind of clear up my hand and uh, me pretty much doing nothing. Galaxy is also great here for some more offensive pressure. It's Necro versus Galaxy also puts more pressure on the counter runes as Galaxy doesn't really get stopped by PTA as effectively since it keeps its five attack because of the swap. Meanwhile, it dies very heavily to Gorgon's Gaze. So just having that balance out here, I think will be really great just to kind of bait out both those counter runes and sometimes not really having them line up effectively. But it's also really great with a bunch of other stuff I have in the deck just to kind of get some big attackers out to again, put on the pressure, force Karibro to try to use some spirits. And ideally, I'd love to have a Galaxy out with the Krakatuga. So it's a big nine attacker, though I don't know how necessarily that will be. I feel like most of the time just going Krakatuga and getting the burn and the pop of a card will be enough. But one card I do really want to see with Galaxy is the three of Mustachian here. So this card I really want to include because Karibro is also on water and this will be a great way to strike back against his own Galaxy because his own Galaxy will swap its six attack me it hits over it no problem. I do have to watch out for a Gorgon's Gaze because he could just Gorgon's Gaze his own Galaxy and Mustachian at that point will crash into it and die. But at the same time, that does get two spirits out of him, which I will not oppose to as well. There's also just a big body against Earth Beers where Kribo has to sink extra spirits into just hitting over, again, just kind of forcing him to use more spirits, and it can be flexible and be able to swap its own attack to hit in to put on some more pressure if absolutely necessary. So I think this card has a lot of great applications in this matchup, and honestly, just pairing with my own Galaxy is also phenomenal as well. Wrapping up the Lestrals, I run the three Foamy here. I think Foamy is great into this matchup to help bait out those Earthquakes, again, getting him to use spirits, or else I just get some great value being able to, when I have like a Galaxy in hand, to be able to pull out a Mulstate is great or vice versa that's a phenomenal application of this card if he ends up just attacking over it and just kind of sitting there stalling out the game while i accumulate cards hand also isn't too bad because again i'm going to need cards to pressure more spirits out of it so if 
Kribo isn't progressing the game state much because he wants to try to not have to deal with the foamy. I'm happy with that as well. Gorgonsky is another great answer. Again, just getting those spirits and answers out of it, especially Gorgon's Gaze, as I do not want to see a Gorgon's Gaze when I go for the Krakatuga. That would be absolutely devastating. But because I'm running the three foamy, I also want the one Smoltuga here, the not Smoltuga, the one Sluggle, as it's a great way to recover on some spirits to help sustain and help beef up my own spirit deck to be able to keep putting out pressure to force out Kribro's spirit deck, his spirit usage, and be able to preserve my fire spirits for when I do need to go for that eruption combo by buffing my deck with water spirits. And also, I just like being able to go foamy dies if I get that value. Just also having the option to go sluggle to get that recovery is always phenomenal. Moving over to the runes, specifically the counter runes, I run three Tsunami, three Gorgon's Gaze, two PTA, and three Shield of Achilles. Exact same lineup as last week. This is just such a solid lineup overall. Uh, shields can put in a lot of work against more aggressive decks, such as the Earth Beaters. PTA also great against some of the slower stuff in water, but also can have some applications in Earth Beaters as well. And then, of course, Tsunami just being able to help me keep stuff on board. Gorgon's Gaze, which is just a powerful card in general. This is all very standard stuff, and I see them. Like, there's no reason not to run this pretty much in any deck that you're playing in set one. So, nothing much more to say there. Wrapping up with the Invoke Runes, I run three Ambrosia, one Nectar of the Gods, and three Resting on Your Laurels. So I really want to have the three copies of Ambrosia. I know I was saying, talking a lot about two last week, but in this particular deck, you really need those Fire Spirits to be able to cast off the multiple eruptions with the Krakatuga. It's very expensive, and the later in the game it goes, the less likely you are to have those Spirits to execute that combo. Now Ambrosia here can get us those Spirits. It goes a, a net plus two to the Spirit deck, which is exactly why I need to cast a Krakatuga or Eruption. So the idea is that this card can convert into an extra use case of Krakatuga or Eruption in my hand, get those Fire Spirits back, and that's going to be super valuable into this matchup. I'll probably just be trying to fire these off as early as possible, even if it is just to recur Water Spirits to preserve the Fire Spirits in my deck to make sure I play around Jataya, just like I did against Alex last week. The one Nectar of the Gods, because I'm not running Afros, I don't really have a draw engine, so I want to make sure that I have some draw power. It'll really help me dig for the Krakatuga in extra eruptions. Uh, one of, just because I really don't want to find more. I don't want to be using all my spirits on card draw. I just think the one of is A-OK. -okay. And then the three Resting on Your Laurels as my premier removal card, especially if I'm up against the water side of Kribro's lineup, I do want to have these Laurels just to be able to help clean up boards, take out some foamies if it ever lines up. And against Earth Beers, this also can be great to clean up boards. So this one is just super valuable all around, so definitely want to max it out. Doesn't compete against Earthquake, but at least it's something I got. I also want to loop back around to why I'm not running the Afros package. Simply put, I just didn't really find space for the Poseidons and the Tridents. And while it's a nice package, I feel like everything else in here is more crucial. Like, I really want those Molestations to challenge those galaxies. So I just figured, you know, it's just a draw engine in the deck. And while a draw engine is super good, I really do need to be forcing him to use spirits. So I made the judgment call that I think that this deck can do fine without that powerful draw engine and rather just kind of going for more a pressure, more mid-range game plan with Krakatuga to just kind of close it out. Moving over to the spirit deck, I just did a 10-10 split of fire and water. There's probably a way to better optimize this just a little bit, but I really need these fire spirits for the eruptions and the Krakatuga, and I need all these water spirits for everything else. So when I was looking over the deck, I figured I can easily navigate it with 10 spirits, especially with all the generic runes that I have. So I figured that this just made a lot of sense. I can always start using dipping into the water spirits more at the beginning of the game, and as the game gets on and I might need more water spirits, I can always start tapping into the fire spirits. I just want to make sure I have enough to be able to close out the game of these by Pyros. Moving over to the side deck, if Kribro is on primary Earth Beaters. I do want to side out the Molestations for the Wormites because if he isn't on Galaxy, those Molestations really aren't doing as much as I'd want them to. But these Wormites against Earth Beaters can do a quite a lot. Also searchable by uh, the Smoltuga, meaning I don't always have to go for the Necroft if I just need to answer something. So I figured that's such an easy side out. And I don't always have to side out the three Molestation for the three Wormite. I can always side in two. I can side in one. It just depends on what I see out of his deck. I also have the one of PTA if I really need it over, say, the third shield. Two PTA is pretty standard just because against aggressive decks, it really doesn't do as much. And I think against Earth Beaters, it can be sequenced sometimes in a way, but it's also just very awkward against Equal Links and other big beaters. But if Grebo's on a slower deck, really tapping into that slow, grindy water play, I really want to have that Poison Tip Arrow just to have a bit more removal. So I'd definitely be signing out for a shield as shield probably won't be as live and might just get stuck behind Trident Lock most of the time anyway. Speaking of that slower, grindier deck, I do run two Pandora's Box if I need a way to keep Kribro off some of those 
slow grind your stuff. My thought process is more of an attrition deck that's utilizing Foamy and then Rummagem to find Jataya. These might be some good swap-ins just to keep them off of those cards. Only two copies because I don't think I would need the full three against that deck. I've got Gorgon's Gaze, which also helps out. But if Gorgon's Gaze isn't enough, I can just side these two in, maybe for like two shields. So I can cut out the shield, go PTA two Pandora's Box just to kind of keep that in check a bit better. And the final card I have a definitive side in for, it's Drops. Just kind of cutting in for the Nectar of the Gods. If I find that I've got no problem building up hand sides and rather I just be able to shuffle back in cards in the late game to be able to dig for those additional eruptions to close it out or maybe Krakatuga or if I'm bricking on Krakatugas I can just shuffle them back as well I can always side in this card but I do think the draw power is going to be a bit better and if I brick on multiple Krakatuga oh well is what it is I need to find the card anyway but for right now I do think the draw power is just a bit more valuable than possibly clogging my hand up with Krakatugas as that's just one card and I don't think clogging my hand up on eruptions is all that bad either it, it's a Debatable because I still want to be able to put pressure, make sure I'm not just getting swarmed and can kind of keep up on board. But at the same time, they're still useful and I still want to see multiple copies of it. So we'll cross that bridge if we get there and just kind of feel out the game to see which one's better drops or not. And then to round out the side deck, I run one small Tuga, one Sluggle, two Veritaqua, and the one Trident of Poseidon here. So this one's just kind of stuff maybe I'd want. Third small Tuga if I want more searches. Maybe I want to make sure I can find a small Tuga to search out Necroff and Wormite. Just kind of get some extra value to keep up on board. We can always do that side out like a Mustachian for it as well. Uh, Sluggle, just an extra one if I feel like I need some extra recovery to be able to keep up. That's always an option. Maybe cut out a Mustachian for that one as well. Two Veritaqua if I'm up against Okariba's oh, playing a very defensive focused deck and I just need the extra ways to kind of hit in and put on that pressure. This card's fine for that. Again, probably would go in with Mustachian. And then finally one Trident Poseidon. If he's on Poseidon, this is kind of a cheeky Tekken to try and lock him using his own Poseidon. I don't know how much that'll come up. That's really the only reason I would run it, but it's there if I decide I want to. Hoping to get some redemption with this burn deck, hoping to pick up a win in this final week so I can end five and eight, or five and eight, five and three out of the eight matches that I played. Maybe that'll get me a top slot for probably third and fourth, but I don't know. I haven't calculated that, nor do I plan to until after this match is over. I just want to focus on enjoying playing this deck and trying to pilot to the best of my abilities. So fingers crossed that I can do that. And now I want to hear from you all. What choices do you possibly disagree with this deck and you would want to run over it? i love to hear why down in the comments below. You can find all my fellow casters channels linked down in the description below. Kribo will be the top one as he is my opponent for this week. And if you've enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and turning on the notification bell so you're notified when I do upload more content. Depending on the results, this may be my final ECL2 deck profile video. So it's a bit bittersweet that this could possibly be it because I've had a blast this season, some frustrations, but overall it's been a fun time. But with all that being said though, Let's sign out as I always do. Look forward to more content coming out real soon.